Yeah, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to talk about our project we call Fair Mat, which is a German initiative. And um, I guess it actually is linked, as you will see, to some of the US activities as well. So, okay, you, we have several areas in this. I won't go into all the details here. I will actually focus on this experimental aspect of it, but you can see it really covers a wide range of activities in the field of um, material science, both experimental, but also theoretical. And um, it's based actually on, I've seen this already listed before, this NOMAD repository, which contains already more than 140 million DFT calculations. Um, that has been established a while ago as a European project, but actually has users and submissions from all over the world. And actually, it, it's one of these uh, databases that also ingests data from other databases, which is one of the reasons why it is so large. But I think one has to have um, a place where you can really see all the data that is in different databases altogether. Um, just uh, how does it relate to the materials um, characterization tetrahedron that we're used to? So I already told you it contains data uh, from theory, experiment, and so on, but it also includes use cases so that there are some, uh, well, yeah, use cases that you uh, can actually see how it um, really, in, um, yeah, how it actually affects the community in, in these specific areas. It includes this, the synthesis of materials, for example, crystal growth, but also layer deposition like MBE and so on. Um, then we have computational material science, that is what the NOMAD database brings in already. And then we have experimental um, characterization um, of different things, for example, structure, but also properties and so on. And all this, um, we hope to really cover a very wide range of material science applications. But, um, I will talk about the, the experimental part today. Um, that is not easy because you, yeah, it's it's you already have databases for theoretical database uh, for theoretical materials, and we've already seen uh, some databases, of course, for materials, but they're often either non-domain specific, like the Nodo, for example, where you can upload anything, but it's very difficult to compare different data sets, or you have very domain specific ones. So um, that is also a problem because then it's very difficult compare data from one domain with data from another domain or one database with that of another database. So we, we really invest a lot into producing these metadata standards that help us to really bring everything to a, to a common basis so that we can really compare, for example, data acquired uh, in optical spectroscopy with data acquired in electron energy loss spectroscopy and so on. So that is really a big investment. You, of course, have to also have metadata standards that allow you to really define what is an apple and what is an orange. Um, that's what I already said. We have to be able to link data to each other between especially different techniques. We should be ha having some techniques that help us to verify whether the data is reliable um, and give it maybe some score or so. And that is something that I've already heard in one of the previous presentations. Um, we have to get the community involved. How do we get people on board to actually supply their data and help build this database so that it can be used by other people and of course also themselves. And um, for that, of course, you need to have some interface to search data, which is standard nowadays already. And as I said already, we want to have role models that's these use cases that I already showed you previously. So, the, what FEMA did is actually it was it, the, the funding for this started about a year ago, or uh, maybe a year and a half ago, and it has employed roughly 25 people that do a, kind, a lot of different things that is building metadata standards, uh, developing code, developing the infrastructure to actually ingest data and, and display it and search it and so on. And for the experimental part, we focused on five techniques initially. That is um, to cover really a wide range, for example, optic electronic properties, atomic structure, but also electronic structure with different spectroscopy techniques, but also electromicroscopy, atom probe tomography, and so on. Um, and use these as the start. And we've already expanded um, beyond this, for example, scanning probe microscopy and so on, we already cover as well. And one of the aspects um, I already mentioned is developing metadata standards. So you may have heard of this Nexus format um, that's used at synchrotrons and large scale. Um, facilities like neutron scattering facilities and so on. And so we've supplied actually a number of user-defined formats um, or application definitions, they call it, to this Nexus um, consortium. 
And we also have discussion platforms where we discuss metadata, where we discuss the definition of, uh, well, terms. You know, when you say energy in, for example, DFT, well, what does it really mean, right? So different codes produce different types of what, what energy uh, they, they define. Um, and of course, you also need to have a tool that helps you to convert metadata from one format into another, because all the different instruments in the material science community, you have different vendors, you have home built instruments, they all have different data formats. And you need to somehow bring the data format of that machine or that discipline into a common format that you want to define for these types of data. And um, helping this, we've developed, for example, these graphical tools that help you to really do this um, without having to be a programmer. And um, the last point that I want to make is how do you get people on board? And that is actually something that we invest a lot into because we really want to get every lab, um, not only in Germany, but across the globe, um, somehow buying into this and, and, and building this database. And for that, we've developed this data infrastructure that helps us to, this is not what I, I thought this was not the slide that I wanted, but. Well, yes. Okay. <laughs> we work with electronic lab notebooks and um, that help us then to really upload the data, work with the data online, and then also uh, allow us to uh, have custom codes with, for example, Jupyter notebooks or custom software that we developed or the software provided by third parties to really run on the server directly there, have state of the art data analysis techniques that nobody has to install on their local computer, but run really on the server with the data that they've uploaded and um, really have them reproducible analysis, but also a state-of-the-art analysis. And um, as a summary, I'd like to say, well, we, we built this infrastructure. I think we already got quite far, have already a number of data sets, not only theoretical ones, there is of course already a lot, but also experimental data sets um, uh, built in, ingested into the database. And um, we are working on solving these challenge, challenges of making links between different experimental techniques and um, also of establishing ways to um, somehow verify data uh, against each other. And that is actually a big benefit of having different data sets of different types, because if you can somehow go back to the original materials structure and electronic structure, then it's often easy to forward, for example, simulate these experiments and verify whether they agree with one another. And if you're interested, here are some websites that you can go into. There's also a number of tutorials, videos, and so on that you can uh, find out more like.